Welcome everyone to Coffee and Ministry, Virtual Dialogue on Faith. I am Peter Dutram, and the Director of the Institute for Lay Ecclesial Ministry and Service in the Department of Pastoral Ministry in the Archdiocese of San Antonio, and I welcome you warmly today. There are two things that you need for these conversations. One is ministry, and the second one, a cup of coffee. So get your resources together. And I want to welcome today two amazing ladies. The first one is Yvonne Dilling. Yvonne is a mission promoter and educator for the Marital Fathers and Brothers. Her ministry is to help each person discover and nurture their missionary identity following the pastoral vision of Pope Francis. Yvonne served many years as a lay missionary in Central America and feels a passion for helping others to develop a missionary spirituality. So care for creation has always been a calling for Yvonne, and now more so with the emphasis that His Holiness has given to it. She offers workshops and retreats in parishes, Catholic schools, and at the Mexican-American Catholic College on a variety of topics related to the general theme of understanding mission today. Her parish is Mission San Jose. Welcome, Yvonne. Thank you. Very good, good to have you here today in the morning. Now, I also want to welcome uh, my colleague, Honorable Rebecca Siemens. She's Executive Director of El Camino de San Antonio Missions. Rebecca is a Texan attorney and a formal, former Special Justice of the Supreme Court of Texas. Welcome, Rebecca. Good to have you on Coffee and Ministry. Thank you. So our topic today it's a, a topic that it's um, in, I think you're passionate about it, which is celebrating the fifth anniversary of Laudato Si. I can't believe it's already five years since uh, His um, Holiness gave us this gift in the cyclical letter called Laudato Si. But before we dive in, how about it if we begin in a brief prayer? And I'm taking this prayer from the number 246 of Laudato Si. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest of your creatures. You embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out upon us the power of your love, that we might protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as brothers and sisters, harming no one. O oh God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth. So precious in your eyes, bring healing to our lives that we might protect the world and not prey on it. That we might sow beauty, not polluting and destruction. Touch the heart of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature. As we journey towards your infinite light, we thank you for being with us each day. Encourage us, Lord, we pray, in our struggle for justice, love, and peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The beautiful prayer was composed by Pope Francis in his, in his encyclical letter, Laudato Si. Now, Yvonne, let's begin with you. Encyclicals um, are the highest level of doctrinal teaching with papal authority. Now, since Pope Leon XIII, our popes has given us 186 encyclicals, and the Holy Father, Pope Francis, in 2015, is the first one who actually dedicated one complete encyclical to the care of creation. Talk to us about what is Laudato Si, and why is that so um, important for the church and the world? Thank you, Peter, for the opportunity here. And um, thank you for the opportunity to share something that's a passion in my own heart and my own spirituality. Laudato si, mi signore. You know, these are Latin words. Our encyclicals have Latin names. This is a phrase out of Pope, out of St. Francis' canticle. 
uh, praise be to you, my Lord. And this encyclical, one of the things that I love to say to everyone about the, the writings right now of our current Pope Francis is that they are very readable. This is a very readable document. We do not have to have a doctorate in theology to understand uh, this encyclical. And I'm so glad that you mentioned what is an encyclical. This is serious. We can't say, oh, this is just a little letter. I'll consider it if I want to. This is serious to our faith. These encyclicals are documents. It's like, you know, as a Catholic, this, this is guidance and I need to take it seriously. So, so Laudato Si, praise to be to you, my Lord. These are the words right out of the canticle. And just to give you a sense of how readable, I'm looking right here at a copy of the encyclical, how readable this is. The opening paragraph says, says this, in the words of this beautiful canticle, St. Francis of Assisi reminds us that our common home is like a sister with whom we share our life and a beautiful mother who opens her arms to embrace us. Praise be to you, my Lord, through our sister, Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us, who produces fruits and flowers and herbs. So that's a quote, you know, this, the last line is a quote right out of the canticle, but uh, give you a sense of how this starts. You know, it's a very readable, um, a very readable document, and I'm sure everyone uh, will feel like, okay, I can take this up and work on it. So in this document, Pope Francis tells us that our sister, Mother Earth, is crying out because of the harm we've inflicted on her. And we've been irresponsible in our use and abuse, and we need to take this seriously. The, the, the encyclical has come of like three basic goals. Um, one, to understand the scope and the causes of this crisis. And Pope Francis does name that our Mother Earth, our common home, is in crisis. He says that. Second, it's to encourage us and guide us to listen to our Mother Earth with our hearts. And then third, he's calling on us to change our behavior, which isn't difficult. When we have a change of heart, it leads to a change of behavior. So we start with the heart, and this is where Pope Francis is calling us all to do this. Um, what is this? So this talk about like, you know, he's calling for a transformation of our hearts, of the way that we relate to Mother Earth and the way that we see her. And so he's calling us to go deeper and broader in the understanding of our basic covenant. So, you know, this covenant goes something like this. You know, God has said, I am your God, you are my people, I love you. That's God's covenant with us. And how do we love back? We love each other, we love God, and we love the creation. Those three things. And he's pulling all these together. So these are, um, these are like underlying everything else. We, this is um, now become a part of Catholic social teaching. This document has been added to the compendium of so Catholic social teaching. It's been added as a path of mission. This means I am in mission when I share the love of God with others in all different ways. I am in mission when I am caring for creation and helping to write the structures that make life on earth resemble the original garden that's sh shared to us in Genesis. So Pope Francis talks about three um, false cultures that we are living right now. And he calls them cultures of materialism. And he, he calls these out and he wants us to reflect on these in our personal lives. He says, we're living in a culture of comfort. So what's this culture of comfort? I'm, I feel sad. Oh, I think I'll go buy something. I feel lonely. Oh, I think I'll eat something. Uh, I, um, I am mad at everybody. I think I'll destroy something and get myself a little bit more comfortable. This culture of comfort. This is a false culture, he says. He also mentions the culture of waste. And in this one, we need to recognize 40% 
of the food produced today in the United States will be thrown away. I don't want to eat leftovers. I don't do leftovers. I, you know, I don't I take off the skin of everything. Oh, it's got a slight blemish. I don't want it. You know, this is a culture of waste that he's, that he's calling out and saying, this is a sin against our brothers and sisters. And the third is the culture of indifference. So, you know, we like globalization because we're getting stuff from countries all over the world, you know, produced elsewhere at low prices and everything. Well, globalization has made us neighbors, but it hasn't made us brothers and sisters. For us to become brothers and sisters and really care for one another and realize we share this common home, so this is about everyone, which means we're responsible for the poor. And the way we care for creation directly affects how we care for the poor. The Genesis story is really key in Laudato Si. And in this document, this is, this is about heart. It's about rereading um, the story of Genesis. And so, you know, in this, this is very important for lay cate for the cate catechist faith formation leaders, those who are working with children and for all of us to, to really focus on this part. And I just, it is so important because if we don't understand this, we don't understand this integral conversion, this transformation that Pope Francis is calling on all of us to go through. And it's, it's, a, it's a reworking of, of our transformation. So you know, he says that in Genesis, the Genesis story, we've, we traditionally read it, we're to keep it and till it. That's what the creation is for. Well, we've done really good focusing on the tilling part of that. Till it, use it up, you know, use it, it's for us. We've even used the word dominate. He's saying we're off balance. This caring for creation needs to be the focus. So he says that the Genesis story is about relationships. You know, God said it's not good for man to be alone, for human beings to be alone. We're created to be in relationship and we're created to love. So we have this relationship with our creator, this relationship with other human beings, and this relationship with creation. These are the relationships outlined in Genesis. And um, so he explains sin as an understanding of being ruptured relationships. This is, I never got this in catechism, Peter. I never got this understanding and I, I, I really, it really relates to me deeply. Um, this rupture um, produced in these relationships is this rupture in our relationship with the creator and with other human beings, but also with the creation. So this for me is what makes this document historic, that this is the foundation of this and this is the transformation. The other aspect for me that makes this historic, Pope Francis doesn't start off saying, okay, all Catholics, I'm talking to you. He says, I wanna talk with everyone in the world. And I'm calling on all of you Catholics to talk with everyone because we share our common home with everyone. And so, you know, we're, this means that we're living out our call to mission when we're working with San Antonio groups that are working on care of creation here in San Antonio. That is a part of our living out. Um, I, uh, I, I wanna make just a few words of summary. I think Psalm 24 states it really well. The earth is the Lord's. So what's the flip of that? It's not mine. It's not mine, it's the Lord's. And my neighbor is more than who lives across the street. My neighbors are global. And I reflect my love for God in the way that I love and care for creation. So we're called to pray about this, to learn about this, and then to act about this. So I'll leave it right there. That's just a real brief intro. I hope I have whetted your appetites. You and later we'll talk about some resources. 
You definitely have. And the importance of formation and the important challenge that you kind of um, bring it back from what Pope Francis states is that then through formation, we need to ensure that we provide the spaces for constant conversion to reconcile ourselves, not just with the Lord, not just with the, uh, our neighbors, but also with creation. These three dimensions, these three areas, elements that need to constantly be at the forefront of um, witnessing Christ. Thank you so much, Yvonne. It, it's fascinating. And um, there are resources, Yvonne, that I want you to, before we go into the local resources, what resources are there nationally um, to study, if you want to study more about La Dato Si? Well, so I like to encourage people who are right now, you know, we're not going out to the stores and all that, we're not going to the bookstores and things, go to YouTube. I love what Pope Francis himself does on YouTube. He does a five minute introduction and it's just, you know, and he's got all these folks that know how to do good technology and you will get a beautiful summary with beautiful pictures that touch your heart and concretely describe to you where to go. So, and there are many, many other resources. We have the Catholic Climate Covenant uh, webpage as well. And you go into YouTube and you put in Laudato Si introductions and these come up. And at five year anniversary, those of us who are starting out are actually fortunate because everybody else has done the hard work. There are introductions in Spanish and in English for first graders, for kindergartners, for high schoolers from a faith perspective, but connecting up with other resources. And then we have the San Antonio City resources and then our own website. I'm really wow. pleased, so pleased that the Archdiocesan website of San Antonio in the Department of Life, Justice, and Peace has a place. You know, and this and this resource help us helps us to focus, pray, learn, act. And the links are all there. And they're beautifully done in Spanish and English. And if anybody has any difficulty finding that section on the Archdiocesan webpage, we have a great receptionist at the Pastoral Center. Call and say, I'd like to talk to either Peter or to Araon Castillo in the Office of Life, Justice, and Peace, and they can give you the link. And maybe someone can put the link right into the chat right now. That would be helpful. So then the third resource I just want to mention, oh, great, there it is on our screen. So you can see this is what you're looking for at the Archdiocesan website, and you see that it's in the Department of Life, Justice, and Peace, and that's how you get to it. If somebody wants yeah. a hard copy of the encyclical, you know, this encyclical, the Mock Bookstore has it available. Um, Mexican American Catholic College, right there, just a block south of the Pastoral Center, has it. And they also have some study guides available from our Sunday visitor that are very usable. Again, this does not require a doctorate. We have no reason not to get going on this. And then just to say, all of these resources help us to know this is more about, I really have to recycle seriously and I really have to eat my leftovers. This is much more. We're transforming right. our hearts. Right, thank you, thank you so much, Yvonne. Rebecca, so the Archdiocese of San Antonio is planning a series of events around the fifth anniversary. Could you tell us a little bit more about them? Yes, no, I'm happy to. And actually I'd like to start out with just a quick clip of some promo, if we can pull that up. Um, and here we go. So that was a quick clip, it has some gorgeous music to it as well. And um, here is the bulletin that we'll also have. And uh, it's very uh, attractive bulletin that's going out hopefully to uh, all the parishes, encouraging them to come to an outdoor mass. Now, um, we will be at Mission San Jose, and it's what's pictured right behind me, and it's very large space. So we can accommodate with social distancing, of course, 
um, quite a number of people. We'll have some mariachis, you know, singing as well, but further away, uh, of course, masks will be required. Um, but the focus really is on our caring for creation and how appropriate for it to be at, uh, at Mission San Jose where the Franciscans first uh, uh, kind of came to San Antonio 300 years ago. They are celebrating their 300th anniversary this year and that's part of this celebration. In addition, uh, the week of uh, September 13th will be the World Heritage Festival Week. Now, I think most of their um, events will be online, but it is also celebrating um, Mission San Jose as one of uh, the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And we only have one of those in Texas, and it is our missions. We're so lucky to have them. So there are many, many reasons to come to this mass, but of course, the main one is to, to celebrate um, mass with Archbishop Gustavo, with the focus being on Laudato Si and on the care of creation. And basically, it is the Jubilee year, the fifth year of it, and uh, the theme is new rhythm and new hope, and boy, do we need that now. So um, we're looking forward to seeing people there. We also will hope, we're hoping to have a tree giveaway. So there will be trees available. The city is donating them uh, for those who would want a small tree, right? It's not gonna be a giant tree, but would want a tree to take with them to plant uh, as part of their role in caring for creation. Uh, so it is really going to be a great event. And uh, like I said, there will be masks and there will be social distancing to keep us all safe. Rebecca, prior years we have a pilgrimage. So yes. is that happening this year or not? No, it is not because it is one thing to make sure everybody's chairs are separated at mass and everything else. But we had a wonderful pilgrimage last year from Mission Espada to Mission San Juan. But everybody got close together. There was a lot of talking and listening as uh, Archbishop Gustavo talked about different small things everyone could do to try and help the environment. Everything from turning the water off from when you brush your teeth to stop using plastic so much uh, for your water bottles and other things when you can just reuse, you know, a, a more permanent type of container. So, uh, so we couldn't do it this year. We felt like with um, with social distancing. Um, it would just have taken a long time to get 300 people down the <laughs> river trail six feet apart. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you, thank you so much. And for more information, you can go into our chat section, the lower side of your screen. And there, um, Catherine has been very graciously to um, put the links to those resources if you want to know more about this, the not just mass that is going to happen in September on September 13th, 13th. right? And uh, but also many other resources that they can use that we can use to begin um, this uh, fifth anniversary and also the 300th celebration of Mission San Jose. Yvonne, you had something, a question or a comment? wanted to ask if Catherine, who's doing a wonderful job with all of our logistics, can you make it possible for everyone to save the chat? Then they've got all these links for when they're ready to use them, rather than having to try to copy them down or anything. And right now it looks to me like, so you open the chat, everybody, and then you click on the three dots where beside the word file, and it should say save chat, but it's disabled right now. And that's a security. Thing, you know that's um but i don't know if that's we will possible a, we will post the links when we post the video on our youtube channel okay Perfect. okay so we'll get Perfect. the links then thank you thank you so much yvonne before we wrap up to conclude what would be your message to everyone that is uh, attentively listening to our conversation on the data scene well maybe i would leave with you a question to pray about and it's the question that Pope Francis poses in his opening video. And he asks, um, 
what kind of a world do we want to leave to those who come after us? This is our generation to decide this question. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to learn more and dialogue more about these and other topics about our faith, visit our Archdiocesan website and learn more about the many courses that the Institute is unveiling starting in September of this year. Thank you so much, Yvonne. It is a pleasure to have you here. And also thank you so much, Rebecca. Also a pleasure to have you on Coffee and Ministry. And I hope that you can join us in the later, in the later um, segments. And how about if we finish, we end our conversation on this important encyclical um, with a prayer. And I ask you to, um, as we close in prayer, Let's bring everybody that have been asking us to pray for. And if we know somebody that needs prayer, let's bring them in our prayer. And um, I invite you to let's pray together. Even if this is, um, you know, the different voices, sounds, and goes back and forth. But let's recite this prayer together that has accompanied throughout this horrific pandemic in the Archdiocese of San In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, in these times of tribulation, we turn to you, O Mother. See with compassion the suffering of your beloved sons and daughters affected by the coronavirus pandemic throughout the entire world. Ask your son to have mercy on us, bringing healing to those affected and protection to all your children. Jesus Christ, Savior of all people, grant us courage to accompany and care for the entire world in the wake of sorrow and uncertainty. We seek refuge in you, and according to your promise, deliver us from this danger. Amen. Amen. And Anthony of Padua, pray for us in the name of the Father and the Son. Amen. Thank you so much. And until next month, we'll enjoy our, our month and keep each other in prayer. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.